what's going on guys welcome back to the channel this is Jules and in today's video guys we're going to be installing the radium catch can for the PCV side for the Integra Type S 2024 so I'm super excited guys if you guys have watched the end of the last video of the POV drive go check that video out. but at the end guys I told you guys the truth the car is not mine it's actually my dad's car my dad picked up a 2024 Integra Type S and man that thing is a freaking monster from the factory with that 320 horsepower so today we're definitely going to be installing that radium pcv size cash can that is definitely a must with this direct injected car right there the 2024 integral type s look at me with the wire body now we're going to go ahead and jump to the install all right guys so this is the new owner of the 2024 integral type s so now we're going to start the process here right now right now we're going to go ahead and take off the cover that's on top of the valve cover so it's just five ten mils same thing just like the honda civic type rfk To be able to get some more room, you just slide this out of place as a clip here. You just slide this out of place. And then there's these little clips right here. And then you get a little bit more room. So you can see back there. Have more access to this little hose that's right here to take the hose clamp off of it. So now you're gonna have more room to take these two bolts off. So those two tents need to come off next. So for the Integra Type S, you have to push the clip in and then pull up. And then you take it out of the slot. So just pushing this in. Yep. There we go. Yep. So you just take that clip out and then, yep. And you pull that out the way. So you are exposed to those two bolts underneath there when he moves his hand yep those bolts underneath there so now we're going to remove those two bolts two 10 millimeters yep so that's the whole bracket that's coming off so those are the two bolts underneath there. So this is the radium engineering box, as you guys can see. Same thing as the 2017 plus type R. We'll go ahead and open this up. We got some scissors over there, or you got a blade right here. We'll package it. Okay, we got some nice packaging. We'll go ahead and take everything out. The bracket, catch can bolts you know we got the hose to cut we'll go ahead and open up all of this stuff right here and we got it in there good so this is how the cash can is gonna look like that radium looks nice Got some bolts in here. The top bolts right here. That goes on the top. He's opening up the bracket right now. We got some stickers in here. Some cars. We even got some installation instructions. And then we got some of the fitting ends and then hose clamps. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the bracket on the cash can. So we gotta open these four bolts. So this might be the first 2024 Integra Type S Radium cash can install. Yep, so it is an Allen key at the top to tighten the bolt down. While the cash can is facing you with the hole, right? Like that, 
you're going to go ahead and put the bracket upright just like that and then we're going to put the bolts on so you just line it up with the holes we have some loctite that we're going to put on them too as well so we're going to open up the bottom so this is how you're going to dump the oil out so just some screws on the bottom when everything is together and then all the oil is going to be cached and don't forget in the here dipstick. and then you can also use the dipstick to check how much is built up inside so you can dump it out yep and yep and they're just some screws out yep nice dipstick goes all the way down there and they also have a drain plug as well yep so just like that he's gonna snug it just like that not too much not too tight now we're gonna stand this up like that he's gonna get the Lock tight. You're gonna Oops. just put that little bit in the hole. Yep, like that. Yeah, you don't need too much. Yep. Line up. Start turning on the bolts. Make sure the bracket is straight. You're just going to go back and snug them. There we go, just like that. Cool. We're going to screw this one on. top too as well but this one's a little bit easier right yep Got like an allen key same one three size three tying it down yeah that's a bigger one. Oh, this is a bigger one yeah i wonder what size that one is it tells you on the side this is size four there's a four to size four to the bolts size three this is a size four. All right. So now this is going to be for the hose. And we do have to cut the hose to length. There's two as well, guys. So basically this is going to be into the hose on one end. The other one, we of course are gonna have to cut it into length and it's just gonna basically screw on to the side of it. So we are gonna have to cut the hose, so. So these are the 90 degree elbows. So now we're gonna put some lubrication on it to slide it on the hose. Kinda have to slide it on there, push it on. All right, it's man. tough, huh? Yeah, we gonna loop, we gonna loop this bad boy up. So he got the other end on, spraying some more WD-40 in there. All right, so we got both ends on. Now, what's the next step? We're gonna cut it. Cut it right in the middle. Cut it in the middle. Some wire. So we cut it down the middle, as you guys can see. We're of course gonna have to cut more to adjust. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, put it on the car. You see we have adjustment right here for the um, where we wanna put it to. We have four holes. So now we're gonna go ahead and 
open this up yeah these are the hose clamps that goes at the bottom to where we're going to be putting it so we're going to go ahead and open this up so we're going to yeah. put those two holes just like that yeah dope so. so you guys can see the back of it mm -hmm. And then we're gonna go ahead and start bolting it on the wall back there with those two holes. So he's gonna tighten up the 10 mil. So now we're gonna put the everything in this where they're supposed to go. So that's in, and that's it. We have to take the stock hose off for the intake manifold that goes to the valve cover. We're basically just taking off this hose right here, and then there's a clamp right down there that I want to point the light at. That goes into the intake manifold over there, and then there's one that's right underneath the wiring harness that goes right there, as you guys can see. Yep. So now he's going to use some pliers and take it off. You can reach it. Yep. We have another clamp up there. Yep. And that one's in the intake manifold. Yeah, so you can see that one. That one's a little pretty tough to see. You see it? Yep. There we go. Now the hose just needs to pull off of it. It's under tight. Oh, yeah. so that's one side off. And then I'm gonna have to use a flathead and slide it off again. Good. Yeah, you have to break the seal. Yeah, they usually have a seal. So this is the stock hose that's on there. It's a pain in the butt to get off, but that's it right there. I gotta try and reposition the seal now, right? Okay. Now the hose got to go in here, right? Yep. Which we got to cut off something, right? Yep. Now he's cutting it. And then he's going to get the clamp. Let me make sure that's enough we cut off. Right? That's the right way too, right? I think so. To, um, so you can have enough room? I uh, believe so. happy with it because uh, you get what I was trying to say right mm -hmm. as long as it comes straight down and kind of like goes in you know what I'm saying yeah. so it could be free flowing it just goes down like that. so it is yep nice so now he's just gonna use the fly head and tighten up the clamp right there right now he's tightening down the clamp This here is gonna be like that. Yep. Right there. Yep. So now he's gonna use the Allen key and tighten it down. Doing the last part, I gotta tighten up this here. Where the little holes is down there. So 
he got that one underneath there tighten up so now he's just gonna tighten up the AM fittings the black ones and then that's it Okay, mm -hmm. that way. Lay down a little bit. Yep. Okay, so we're just tightening up the Allen key in the middle one last time. Okay, good. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Push this back over here. Push this back in here. Good. Okay, it just needs to come down a little bit. Yeah. Yep. And then put the cover on top. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much it, guys. With the radium catch cane. I wanted to make this additional part of the video so I could go over why it's very important for your Honda Civic Type R, FK, FO5, your even your Integra Type S, that's a direct injected car. Why it's so important to get a catch can for your car. So as you guys saw in the video when we removed that hose from the top that's connected that one little hose that goes from your valve cover to the intake manifold you guys can see that some of that from the top of the head where the intake manifold is of course it's oil all in there so then it has like a blow by and it goes into the intake manifold so it's kind of like a little breather for it so what happens is oil from the valve cover will eventually get into the intake manifold so what happens is right here as you guys can see this is a comparison from a direct injected car versus a port injected car as you guys can see the intake side where the air comes in from outside of the motor then you have the injector right here so what happens is because a direct injected car has the injector below the valve compared to a port injected car right here the injectors is above the valve as you guys can see so what happens is the air comes in right here and then as you guys can saw we had the breather holes attached somewhere around here well what happened is basically the oil will come in from that hose and it would hit the valves right here so what it will do over time is junk up the valves with oil the oil will start to build up against the valves that go back and forth and what over time will happen is it will affect your fuel economy the efficiency the emissions and everything so to prevent that for a direct injected car you put that cash can there and a cash can will basically cash the oil into the little canister and of course the air will be able to still get through and be able to work efficiency and the valve does not get junked up with a poor injection car you really don't need a cash can so for a port injected car what it does because the injectors is behind of the valve what it does is as you can see it's spraying the gas out of the injector what it does is the gas gets sprayed on the valve so it's basically cleaning the valve so every time the injectors is working and it's moving like fast more than you can even blink or catch it spraying the fuel out so quickly it is and then the valve is always opening and closing right here with a port injected car is always cleaning the valve off so any type of oil buildup or anything is really not going to be much because the fuel is being sprayed on that valve too constantly while hitting the piston as well and then of course the gas gets down here and then you have your spark plugs that uh combust everything and basically it pushes the uh, pistons out and then over here is the hot side so this is where your header and the exhaust fumes come out of the back of the exhaust so while the air comes in the fuel comes in the spark hits it it blows up then the hot combustion air comes out of the back 
of the hot side of the valve and it comes out. So as you guys can see, the port injection sits behind the valve and it sprays and always cleans the valve. So that's nothing you have to work or worry about. But I direct inject the car like the Honda Civic Type R, F05, and the Integra Type S and FK8 or any direct injected car. As you guys can see, the injector is below the valve. So it's not going to be cleaning the valve. So that's why it's very important to have that cash can there so it can be able to catch any of that oil and your valves can be able to be clean and you will have good fuel your car is going to run a long time you get better gas mileage and of course it's better for emissions and stuff like that so that is a good thing i know they have this question mark here with reliability a lot of people say the reason why a direct injected car is not going to be good for reliability for like the injectors is because the injectors are going to have to work a lot more faster stronger and everything because it's sitting below the valves so you're going to have to be spraying a lot more to make sure you get that detonation and stuff like that so i wanted to also show you guys what it's going to look like after if you do not get a cash can over time like 150 100 thousand miles so this are the valves and this looks <laughs> this looks disgusting guys so if you do not get a cash can this is how your valves are going to look over time is the oil is going to get dark and hard and it's going to look freaking nasty over time and of course it's going to affect your fuel your engine running smoothly is going to affect your gas mileage and everything so that's why it's very important early on for a direct injected car that you guys get a cash can so your valves does not get junked up and look like this so it's very important and then also have a little gift for you guys so as you guys can see the air comes in you guys can see the injector is going to blow, it's going to spark, it's good, and everything's going to combust. And then, as you can see, the next valve is going to open and it's going to let all the hot air out. So, just like that. So, that's a pretty good uh, diagram. And here's another one. As you guys can see, the air is coming in, it blows up, and then, as you guys can see, it comes out out of the exhaust. And you can see the whole crank and it's the crank is hooked up to the wheels and it's moving the whole car so that's pretty dope so yeah guys i wanted to go over that with you guys so you guys can see the difference between a port injected car and a direct injected car and why it's very important to get an oil cash can i also found another diagram right here which is pretty dope so as you guys can see it has the head so this whole thing is the head right here with the valves opening and closing for the hot side and then you got the intake side and then you guys can see this line right here and then this is basically the block so that's when you take off the head like half basically the head is like half of the engine you can see the pistons right here so the whole thing comes off and then as you guys can see this is a direct injection diagram and then you can see the injectors right here is below the valves as i was telling you guys that's why it's very important to get a oil cash can for a direct injected car and as you can see, the intake manifold is right here. It's hooked up and bolted on on the head. And you can see the air coming in. And then the intake valve goes up and down. So the air comes in, and then it's spraying the fuel in here. And then you got the spark plug. You even got a picture of the spark plug, which is dope. It, it uh, combusts and explodes. And then the hot air and fumes and everything comes. This valve, exhaust valve open. And this is exhaust valve, which is pretty dope. And then it's going to open and then it's going to let all of the fumes and everything come out of the downpipe or back up the turbo for the Integra Type S or Honda Civic Type R. The exhaust fumes are going to come out and then, of course, go through the front pipe and then the exhaust. So this is a pretty sick little diagram as well. And you can see the block and you see the piston sitting down here. So, yeah, this is another dope diagram with all the labels and stuff. So the air comes in, the fuels being sprayed the combustion and the air is help, helping force the air out of the exhaust valve. So it's only going one way because the air is constantly coming in 
and the exhaust valve and the fumes are coming out. So this is a pretty good diagram. At the beginning of the video, like I was saying, the 2024 Integra Type S is not my car. It's actually my dad's car. So congrats to my dad. He picked it up. I never, I didn't even know he was going to be getting the car. I guess he saw it in person and he was like, and he saw the color. And he was like, I got to get it. I came home one day and I was like, what is this? Somebody bought a new car? And then, yeah, I saw he picked up a 2024 Integra Type S. So it's basically and it's basically the same motor as my Integra Type S, but from the factory, my car had 306 horsepower. His car has 320 horsepower, so it has a little bit more horsepower from the factory. So basically the same motor. And guys, my dad has a bunch of plans for the Integra Type S. And we're probably going to do a build series. So if you guys can and you guys want to support the channel, all you guys got to do, of course, it's free. Hit the like button. If you guys can, put a little comment in the channel. And of course, any type, if you guys can, share the video. And any type of uh, pay that YouTube gives me, whatever it gives me, I'll help my dad with getting parts for the Integra Type S. And we'll make a, like, a little build series. And if you guys want to even contribute more, I have merch down below if you guys want to cop merch. So we'll make like a little build series with the Integra Type S. So I know his goal, he's planning to do a bunch of stuff he wants to do, which a lot of stuff for these new cars is freaking expensive. So he wants to do full bolt-ons tuned on 93. And of course, if you guys don't know, of course, that car from 320 stock, it will probably make 400 horsepower, 400 torque, which is insane. And then another dope thing about these turbo cars, especially new cars today, is you will get, of course, the more power, but you will also get a lot better gas mileage. So right now, I think my dad's saying his 2024 Integra Type S is averaging 25 miles per gallon, but I definitely know with the cartoon, you're probably going to get 29 miles per gallon to 32 miles per gallon. So you get a lot better gas mileage as long as you're not beating on the car you drive it normal you get way better gas mileage with the cartoon and of course you have more a lot more power which is pretty dope so you gotta love these new turbo cars especially with the cartoon it runs more efficient efficient and you get better gas miles per gallon i noticed a big difference on my type r when i got it when i got that car completely stock I was getting terrible gas mileage for a stock car. I was getting like 22 miles per gallon was the best I'm getting, 22, 23. As soon as I got that car full bolt on, tuned to 93, I'm getting 29 miles per gallon to 32 miles per gallon, which is insane and dope. And I have way more power too. So that is the dope part about these new cars with it being turbo and everything. They run a lot more efficient when they're tuned and everything, which is pretty dope. So if you guys want to see that, sharing the whole build series of my dad car and I actually get to share this experience with me building the car with my dad and I get to share the experience with you guys uh it'll be a dope build series that I get to share the experience with my dad and I get to share it with you guys too so if you guys want to see that definitely you guys can hit the like button subscribe to the channel put your notifications on put a comment in the channel if you guys want to support buy merch but I'm super excited to uh, share this experience with you guys so definitely guys that's it if you guys can support i really appreciate it it'll mean a lot to me but guys that's it guys if there's anything that you guys want to achieve find your inner drive the thing that drives you to take a step toward your goals every single day and make it happen peace